So good morning. Today's lesson is continuing from last week's Principles of Computer Science, the P lesson, um, building on environmental issues. Oops. So we want to make sure that we know what e-waste means and what e-waste is. We want to know what the problems are to do with getting rid of digital technology once you've finished using with it. And then as well as the problems, we want to think about the opportunities, what we can get from recycling digital technology. and um, what uh, potential problems uh, arise from inbuilt obsolescence and the idea of uh, devices not being um, uh, particularly durable and how things can change in the future. Um, so you'll have an opportunity to go through these in a moment, but I don't want to spend long on it. E-waste means what happens to all of the fridges we no longer need, what happens to all of the circuit boards we no longer need, what happens to all of the mobile phones, all of the batteries, all of the digital technology that is no longer in use. Where does it end up? Is it on landfill? Is it in this country? Is it another country? Does it get recycled or what else happens to it? So sadly, an awful lot of it ends up in landfill, but it needn't be that way. There are some precious metals and um, very important materials involved in circuit boards and digital technology that we could be recycling. It's not just a case of using up space in the land. It also pollutes the land. We have some particularly toxic chemicals in batteries and screens. And if they leak out into landfill, they can pollute water supplies, kill fish, um, and that can go further up the food chain. Um, and we're also missing out on these semi-precious metals. There's a shortage of them. Surely we could reclaim them from old devices. If we recycle, then we save space in landfill, so less pollution in terms of space and less pollution in terms of leakages, which can um, involve some pretty serious fires. And the precious materials, not just copper, silver, gold and aluminium, um, uh, but particularly the, um, like the, the rare earths, which when they are mined has a huge environmental and human costs. If we can recover them, it ends up being cheaper. Gold is a very good conductor of heat, which isn't particularly good for us, um, but a very good conductor of electricity, which is exceptionally good for us. So all of the pins on your RAM or all of the pins on your CPU will be covered in a tiny coating of gold. And it is possible to recover that yourself. Um, quite difficult, but it's definitely possible to do it in a large scale industrial process. So if you get stuff that other people are discarding, like an old CPU, and you can recover that gold from it, and use it either in the manufacturing of more um, technology or just in jewellery or whatever, or just selling it. Um, it pays for itself to recycle um, e-waste, but it's not being done nearly as much as it should be. Plastics are less valuable, but there's a lot of plastic that is wasted, um, but it can be recycled into other plastic items. Uh, I've got some nice rulers that are made from old printed circuit boards. Just, um, quite geeky and also recycled. There's all sorts of stuff that you can build from it. And there are legislation um, rules, laws that force companies to, responsible, uh, to recycle responsibly. Um, so these are the types of questions you might have an exam. What is it that forces or encourages people to get rid of their phones after um, let's say one, two or three years rather than lasting 10 years. I'll pause the video and we can have a discussion. Yeah. We've talked about the alternatives to a short replacement cycle. You can force manufacturers to allow anybody to maintain it. Um, or we can um, just ensure that manufacturers uh, have a responsibility, uh, like maybe a financial penalty when their products end up on um, uh, on a landfill site. A little bit like finding McDonald's whenever you find a McDonald's wrapper on the floor. If you find Intel every time an Intel CPU was not recycled, that would give Intel a financial incentive to make sure that they collect and recycle and repurpose their goods um, or any other manufacturer. Um, so here's what we've got. I'll leave that on the screen for a moment. Um, so today's lesson on P8, 20 things that we think should be recycled, but probably aren't. What do you class as e-waste? Let's make a start on this. So this is P8 in half term eight. Um, 
So for activity two, you don't need to print this up and chop it out, but I want to explain what a diamond nine thing is um, and your options to be able to do it. You've got lots of um, things uh, that can affect the, um, uh, the environment. Uh, so you've got two options. The best is if you take a little screenshot of each of them and arrange them into a diamond nine. What does that mean? It means um, if you rank them from the worst impact on the environment to the least damaging impact, most of them are going to be kind of in the middle, bad but not super bad. Some of them you might decide, and I haven't put much thought into this, I'm just using this as an example, that it is the absolute worst. So this causes like skin cancer and lung disease. That's terrible. All of these are bad. But some of them might not be as terrible. Um, so I don't know, maybe when the plastic degrades from ABS um, into little particles, it's still toxic, but maybe it's not as toxic. So I'm not going to put that quite down at the bottom. You get the idea. You need to read them and rank them and say which one is the worst and which one is the, the least worst. Um, and a diamond nine is because like most of the things are going to be in the middle. Alternatively, if you don't really want to screenshot different parts of them and combine them, maybe just color code them. Put a key at the top and say um, super damaging, damaging but not too damaging, or um, minimal impact on the environment. I don't like the idea of green for minimal impact because it's still bad. Um, but I want you to read them. I want you to rank them in terms of how bad they are. So the final activity today guides you through some legislation. So remember, you have to talk about environmental impact and also um, the law. Legislation means the law. So we've got the WEEE Directive, the Waste and Electrical and Electronic Equipment um, Directive. There's a link there for you to try and find out about it. It's on gov.uk which gives you information about um, the law and the directive in this, in this country. Um, you will have plenty of time this lesson at the end of the lesson. I'll guide you through in a couple of minutes what to do when you finish this. But when you have finished it, make sure it's saved in your um, impact folder 